I wouldn't die. Okay. <laughs> if something went wrong, if, you know, they burned down the school or something. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read through uh, this passage, uh, and if you want to take out your Bibles and follow along, that's a good idea because it's a it's a fairly lengthy uh, passage. It's a um, what do they call them? Not a monologue. What? It's not a dialogue. It, there's a specific word they use for when Jesus hey, and what was the third one? does this, but I can't think of it right now. Um, and it's another one of his I am statements. Oh, yeah. And actually, it's several I am statements in this, let's say, monologue. Um, that he is, uh, he says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the gatekeeper. I am the door for the sheep. Uh, and so we're going to have a number of those uh, in this passage. Jesus said, for judgment I came into the world. By the way, I want you to look at that word judgment. Um, the juniors don't know this, but the word judgment is in their, um, no, I think it's the seniors, their memory verse. Um, and I sometimes give extra credit for random things. So I decided I'd give extra credit if they spelled judgment correctly. Uh, I think so far one person has, has done that correctly. Because everyone thinks there's an E between the D and the G, the, the G and the M, and there is not. Mm -hmm. You can look it up because people sometimes are like, oh, there's an E in there. Go ahead and look it up. We'll see if it is. So one, one person uh, got it. So, Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, are we also blind? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would, not, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, we see, your guilt remains. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the, sheep, uh, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. Uh, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because... He is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Uh, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my father. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, he has a demon and is, and is insane. Why listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one who is oppressed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? So um, that's the passage. Obviously, we will go through it uh, as we walk through this. 
Um, and um, uh, the, the, this text uh, um, begins um, a discussion with the, the Pharisees, uh, another discussion about who Jesus is. Um, and, and it is a stinging message because they believed they were the shepherds of Israel. And he's telling them, you're not. You're a hired hand. You care nothing for the sheep. And they understand that, right? They become angry because of that. So they understand what he is saying. Not only what he is saying about them, but what he's saying about himself. Uh, and so we're going to look at five different groups that, that Jesus uh, addresses. And the first uh, group is uh, blind sinners. Uh, Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, are we also blind? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains, which was a way of saying, yes, you're blind. Uh, and they knew that. They understood that. Um, the curriculum um, has this, this statement. It says, as long as a person thinks that he is all right, he is all wrong. What do you think that means? As long as a, people, as a person thinks that he or she is all right. Yes, Jerry. Like their arrogance blinds them. Yeah, yeah. I I think most people um, around the world, but particularly in the United States, believe that they're good enough for God. I mean, I've never killed anyone, uh, and, and they don't understand uh, in their in their egotism, they don't understand their own need for a savior. They think they're fine. Well, I'm a shoe in for heaven. I'm, you know, I'm a nice person. I, I give money to the church. I give it and and even those sitting in pews don't understand what it means to be saved, what it means uh, to be a follower of Christ. And it has to begin with this. I can't do it myself. Uh, when Josh was little, he had these little saddle shoes. Early 90s. I don't even know what saddle shoes are. Um, and they were white and black and adorable and you tied them. And uh, he insisted that he could tie his own shoes. Now, I knew he couldn't. But he didn't. So I stood there, put your shoes, put them on, put them on. Probably on the wrong feet, but he put them on. I said, okay, go ahead. And he became so frustrated because he couldn't do it. And he even kind of denied that he could. I think that's where most people are. I'm basically a good person, as if that's the qualification, but it's not. Qualification is perfection. And only one person ever has been perfect. Which is why we need Jesus. We can't, uh, we can't do that. So as long as a person thinks he's all right, spiritually speaking, um, he's all wrong. And the Pharisees could not see their need for a savior. They thought that they were the most holy uh, the most learned, the most important people in Israel. They would have never admitted <clears throat> spiritual blindness. They were the seen. They were the ones that were holy. It, it was the people like the blind man, right? Who sinned? This man or his parents and he was born blind. Those were the sinners, not, not them. Um, and uh, I, years ago, I knew a guy named uh, Mel Golden. He was the head of um, uh, prison fellowship in uh, Omaha, and he himself was an ex-convict. He spent a number of years in prison. He 
became, became a Christian through the ministry of prison fellowship. Uh, and then uh, came into leadership for it. And I remember having um, brunch with my father and, and Mel Goble. And this is what Mel Goble said. It's easier to convince a convict in prison of his need for Jesus than it is the average middle class man. They know they've messed up. They know they're in trouble. And the average, especially the average American, thinks they're fine. Good enough. Good enough. They think, I, I, first of all, I think they think all I need is 51%. Is there anyone in here, if you got a 51% on a test, you'd go, yeah! I got I got more than I got more right than I got wrong. No, nobody, that's, and, and that's not the bar. The bar is a hundred percent, and none of us can do that. Maybe on a test, but not in life. We're all dirty, rotten sinners deserving. Um. So, um, why do you think we do that? Why do you think we underestimate our sinful condition and overestimate our own holiness. Yeah. We want to feel good about ourselves, don't we? We want to think we're okay. I think there's something in our our sinful hearts, in our sinful condition that wants to be okay on our own. Um, and um, we don't want to admit um, that we need anyone or anything on our own. Um, but we do. Uh, and we can't on our own um, meet God's standard of perfection. Only Jesus so uh, the first group of people that Jesus uh, talks about is thieves and robbers. Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the, sheep by, the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. So um, Jesus is using the imagery of a sheepfold. Now, this is not an ancient sheepfold, but it is an actual sheepfold. Um, and an ancient one um, might have had some similarities uh, to this, although I don't think they would have had iron gates. Uh, but it was a place of safety for the sheep. Um, sheep, sheep need care. Um, they have really no defense against predators uh, other than possibly cuteness, you know, but I, I don't think some wild animal is going to go, I can't eat that. That one's so cute. That, you know, and so they, they don't have teeth that can bite. They don't uh, have, you know, hooves that can fend themselves off. Um, they all about all they can do is bleat. And so they need then as now, they need a shepherd. They need someone to take care of them. And so the sheepfold was a place of shelter uh, for the sheep. Um, and uh, in the first century, uh, and by the way, so not only shelter from wild animals, but shelter from, from rustlers as well, those who would steal the sheep, those that weren't just wanting a meal, uh, but were wanting to steal the sheep and make money off the sheep themselves. Um, so uh, first century um, shepherds had kind of three different sorts of sheep. Uh, depending on where they were, depending on the terrain, uh, and they would move around uh, some. Some of, some of them were in caves, um, 
and uh, some were um, were built uh, to uh, with stone walls around them, which is kind of what that other that one I should put up there uh, looks like. Um, and and that would have been a more permanent uh, shelter. Um, uh, but the shepherd knew uh, what the sheep needed and uh, and gave them uh, what they needed to survive. Um, sheep get a little bit of a bad rap about being dumb, and maybe they aren't the most uh, uh, t intelligent animals um, on the planet, um, but they do know the shepherd's voice. Uh, and they can distinguish, and I'll, I'll be showing you a video of this. I, unfortunately, the best one is no longer on YouTube, and it makes me so sad. But when they hear their master's voice, you know, and they will follow their shepherd. So in some ways, they're smarter than we are. We don't, we don't always hear our shepherd. Uh, and we certainly don't always, when we do hear our shepherd, we certainly don't always follow um, our shepherd. Um, so... Um, all of these types of, and, and one sheep enclosure, by the way, was like this sort of a, um, a natural hedge, uh, an area where there was uh, greenery that was surrounding uh, the, the sheep. If they didn't, you know, if they couldn't make it back to the sheep fold or uh, if there wasn't a cave of some kind, then they could uh, find a, an area of foliage that would help uh, help the, the shepherd take care of the sheep. But all three of those kinds of, of sheep folds, folds had one characteristic, one door, one way in, one way out. And then if you didn't go through the door, you weren't getting in at all. And so Jesus also says that he is the door. He is the way. And he's going to use that um, that phrase again. Um, and, and the shepherd would stay awake at night uh, in case wild beasts would come and try to take the sheep. And he would uh, fight off um, any animal or any person who would come try to steal the sheep, he protected the sheep from danger. So some of those... Um, Entities that would try and take the sheep were, were animals, but some were human beings wanting to steal the sheep either for a meal or to sell uh, for their own. And so uh, let's talk about uh, thieves. Jesus talks about thieves and, and robbers. And, and you know what a thief is. A thief is someone who breaks into some place that they're not supposed to be to take things that don't belong to him. Uh, and uh, they might come through a window. Uh, they might check the door, but hopefully the door's locked. Uh, they might pick the lock, but they're not going to know the combination or have a key for the door. They can just walk right in. Uh, they have to come in another way, uh, a sneaky way. Years ago, when we lived in Fontenelle Hills, I can't remember how old we were, my sister and I. I think I might have been in college and she was in high school. I don't know. Um, but uh, ConAgra, my dad worked for ConAgra at that time, uh, was trying to get a bill passed through the unicameral, which they did. And my father was the point person for that. Um, and uh, he had received uh, death threats. The, the bill was not universally loved, uh, to say the least. Uh, just, to, just to give you, remember the first day I told you I talk about my parents a lot and that if you would have known them, you'd understand why. 
Uh, one of those people who became angry, that didn't give my dad a death threat, but became angry and didn't want to be friends with my dad anymore over this. After it was all over and that man was in, uh, got cancer and was in the hospital, my father visited him. Um, yes, Jared. I just thought that it was funny that you're smiling as you said your dad got death threats. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just sounds weird, right? Um, but uh, but ConAgra put in a whole house alarm system for, for my parents' house. Uh, and we were taught how to use it. And the one thing my sister remembered is that if the alarm went off, uh, in the words of the people who put in the alarm, that means you've been penetrated. So the house has been penetrated. So we get home from going somewhere and usually um, the door in the, the garage into the kitchen area was unlocked, uh, but it was locked. And we hadn't taken our keys. We didn't, we didn't have a way in. We didn't know what to do. Um, and uh, we, I don't know what happened, but we ended up a pop and coming to help us um, and showed us how we could how we could get in the house by another way that we weren't supposed to be able to do, but he used a credit card and he got us into the, into the house. And as soon as that happened, the whole house starts going, woo, 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 and my sister's freaking out going, we've been penetrated, we've been penetrated. And I, I said, sweetie, we did that. We broke into our own house. That's why you know, I hit the numbers and it, and it went off, but she was so sure that there was a robber in the house, but we were the robbers. We were trying to get in by another way, not the way we were supposed to get in, mostly because we were young and stupid and didn't have our keys with us. Um, so that's what she, that's the, the way Jesus puts it. They have to come in by another way, presumably an illegal one. Um, and, and because Jesus is the door, he is the only way for the sheep. Um, everyone who tries to get in another way must be a thief or a robber or an imposter. Um, and, and Jesus himself in, in John 14 says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, any other way than Jesus is a false way. Is, is a robber or a thief. Um, so um, uh, the statement that Jesus made was definitely an accusation against the Pharisees who thought they were the way. Um, they were the spiritual ones. They were the ones that could lead people to God. And they understood it. They understood exactly what he was saying. Um, so uh, he says, are we also blind? They say, are we also blind? Now, they didn't believe they were blind, but they knew Jesus was saying that they were. Uh, and obviously that made them even more um, angry at Jesus. Um, now, if they had been, had not been blind, then they would have seen that, uh, that Jesus is the way to God. Uh, and Jesus is the door uh, to find rest. Um, so <clears throat> um, a thief is one who breaks in the house to steal, usually enters somewhere somewhere other than the door. Um, and so this is why um, Christianity is the only way. Jesus is the only way. And we can look at uh, and, I mean, there's there's probably thousands of religions, but uh, but we can look at um, some of the major religions and see that Jesus is not the way in, in their religion. Um, in Buddhism, uh, practiced by million uh, millions of people, the the core belief of Buddhism is is the four noble truths, uh, and the four noble truths are this. And when you get to be a senior, I'm going to go into this in more depth. Um, but, um, so, uh, the first noble truth is the truth of suffering, that life is suffering. That's 
probably true, right? Does anyone get out of life without suffering? Probably not. The second one is that the cause of suffering is desire. We suffer because we desire. Um, I have uh, two knees, both need to be replaced. The right one is usually the one that gives me uh, fits, uh, at least pain-wise. Um, and I'm, if I'm on my feet, I'm probably in pain. And what Buddhism would tell me is that I'm suffering because I desire to not be in pain. If I didn't desire to not be in pain, I wouldn't suffer. Uh, and, um, and so the only way to be released from suffering is to end desire for anything or anyone. Yes. It sounds kind of fallacious. I will give you X credit because that's a, that's a really good one. Um, yeah, and it is, it absolutely is fallacious. And furthermore, and I'll talk about this more when you get to be senior. With no desire for anything else, for anything else. Um, it, it, it doesn't seem to fit with who we are, who we were created um, to be. Um, and so the fourth noble truth is that it's by going through the eightfold path, which are right mindedness and right, there's there are eight things that are right, that we can be released from. Interestingly, when I taught world religions um, at Millard North, um, I would bring in a man who was kind of the head of, he passed away a couple of years ago, uh, who was like the head Buddhist in Omaha at that time, um, white guy, it's kind of weird, but, um, and I'd have him come speak to my class. And uh, one of the times he came to speak to my class, he, uh, one of my students who was a believer, um, asked, you know, put up his hand and asked the question, so, so have you made it? Have you made it to nirvana? Have you, have you, you know, lost all desire and, and made it to perfection? And here was his answer. He said, no. And sometimes when I really get in trouble, I pray to God. Now, if your faith needs a backup plan, I'm not sure your faith is is good, right? Um, and I've, I've never forgotten that. Um, so in Hinduism, um, they also seek nirvana. And nirvana is, they, they might call it different things, but it's just, uh, you, generally speaking, especially in Hinduism, um, and also in Buddhism, it isn't a place of perfection. Uh, at some point, you get you get you get wiser and wiser and wiser and better and better and better, and you reach reach full um, uh, understanding, uh, and then you just go poof into the universe, like you meld into the universe. You, you cease to be, um, and uh, and Hinduism believes that as well. Yes, correct me. Wow, really looking forward to not existing. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't bring hope, does it? It no, doesn't. No, really. Yeah, we shouldn't believe Christianity because it brings hope. It does bring hope, but there's a lot of things that bring hope that that are are false things. We should believe Christianity because of the reasons we have to believe Christianity. I'm not going to go in those now to those now because that is all of next year's month. Um, but I promise you that by the end of next year, one of two things will be true. You will either be armed with real truth and real reasons to believe uh, in our faith, or you will have rejected it and um, made your own decision. Uh, but you can't say there isn't proof for Christianity. Um, so, uh, but that's that's next year. So. Um, so it's a in in Hinduism it's this 
reunion with Brahman and, and which is an impersonal force and is the universe. And so you just meld in to that. Uh, and life is, as in Buddhism, this continual cycle of deaths and rebirths deaths and rebirths, and, and how you behave through each life determines your next life. So do good things, you go up, uh, do bad things, you go down, uh, and it keeps going and going and going and going until you reach full enlightenment and then you poof into uh, nirvana. Yeah. Listen, after they poof, like, as the years or whatever, And that's the new world. Forever. Yeah, the thing about Hinduism is there there are lots and lots and lots of gods, uh, and families will have their own, you know, um, little altar to that. And and I'm not sure they even know how many gods there are in, in Hinduism. They just make um, up a god and say this is the one I worship. Maybe I don't know. Um, but, um, it, it all, it, it, all of it is Brahman. Like it, it, it doesn't, I know it doesn't make sense, but, um, and, 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 and they'd also say that a lot of what we believe to be true is just an illusion and maybe everything. Uh, and then I'll just talk about Islam uh, really quickly and then we'll, we'll uh, stop for today. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, if uh, they, they believe like everyone who was like born in some of their past lives, how does the population grow? That's that's a good idea. Because they're like, <laughs> yeah, because they're like, rad and animals. <laughs> yeah, everything is under the law of, of karma. So if you're a, an especially good uh, shipu, uh, you know, then you can go upward. I don't know. If, I don't know if human beings are upward from shipus, but uh, you know, who knows? Um, so um, uh, Islam is uh, is based on the five pillars of of Islam. The five things you have to do. Uh, one is um, the recitation of the creed, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. If you say those words and believe them, words I just said that I don't believe, but if I said them believing them, I am a Muslim. Um, and uh, I'm not. If you take that sentence on its own, I just got fired. Um, so I, just to make sure I'm not, but, but those saying those words and belief in them, uh, is what makes you a, a Muslim. Um, and then you have to make once in your life, you have to make a, a, uh, a, a pilgrimage to Mecca. You have to, um, give a certain amount of money to the poor. You have to pray five times a day. Uh, facing, if you're outside of Mecca, facing Mecca. If you're in Mecca, facing the mosque in Mecca. If you're in the mosque in Mecca, there's this little box you can go to. Uh, and um, you have to do that. Uh, and then keeping the, um, the fast of Ramadan, which isn't really a fast. You fast during the day, you pig out in the night, and then you, you fast during the day for uh, the month um, of of Ramadan. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and those are, those are the things that you do, um, to be a good Muslim. Here's the thing. Every single religion other than Christianity in the world, it, it says the same thing. You can reach perfection. You can reach God. Now, the God is different, what you're supposed to do is different, but every single religion except Christianity says you can do it. The, one of the many reasons, just give me one more sentence, one of the many reasons I believe in Christianity is that it is the only religion that begins with the truth. You can't do it. Jesus did. That's it for today.